Hi, greetings. Good afternoon. Good morning, uh, folks, to wherever you are. Uh, I'm super excited. We are at the TGS 2023 in Singapore, and it's my honor, privilege uh, to be hosting uh, Nalin Adwani from Thai Japan, Thai Singapore. Uh, you know, he's been, he's been leading Thai Japan. Awesome host, uh, phenomenal choices of food. Uh, did a great job in hosting us in Tokyo. Um, the question, Nalan, we want to move is, first is the enigma of Thai, if you will, right? At least what you're feeling. And uh, how do you see TGS sort of bringing that spirit of Thai and then continuing those conversations and sort of helping, um, you know, entrepreneurs, volunteers, investors, government, etc., cetera, um, and, and see this ecosystem sort of, you know, taking forward on the on the foundation of Thai, uh, thai members? Sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Aaron. So, um, I'm Nalan Advani. Uh, very happy to be here. TGS is so amazing. It's, it's just so much energy, so much positive energy that we're seeing here. And I think, you know, what it comes from, really, and, and to your question, um, Thai and TGS is about communities, right? We, Thai ourselves, our chapter is a community, yep. right? And we work very well. We're small, but Thai Japan, we work very well together as a community. Thai Singapore also works spectacularly well as a community. But the brilliance of something like a Thai global event, a TGS, is that we're bringing multiple communities together to form a larger regional global, global community where we talk, we exchange ideas, we learn, we have an opportunity to test out our theories, to validate them beyond our own neighborhoods, Right? and see how far out can we push these ideas? How, you know, how can we expand our ideas and thoughts and um, the, the, our scope of influence to broader communities? So I think to go back to your question, it's really about concentric communities and how we get them to overlap, work together and build larger ones together. But I'm going to get to some specifics, right? Um, how have you seen, for example, Thai Japan work uh, with India? More importantly, how do you see, let's say, the Japan-India conversation? Where it has been and where do you think it's headed? Okay, okay, thank you. So, I mean, my, my, fa my own family is a great example here. Um, Japan and India have had trade for hundreds of years. Um, India was part of the British Empire. So in terms of statistics and data, you didn't really see the numbers show up as India-Japan trade. But when you think back to my previous generations, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, they were already doing, they were doing trade. And that was like the version 1.0 of the interactions. Version 2.0, I think, came more recently in the last 20, 30 years, which is around uh, technology. You know, the Wipro and uh, Infosys, um, type of fantastic Indian company that came to Japan, set up a presence and has been, you know, really scaled their business out such that technology, software, um, human skill and capabilities are being um, applied across the borders. I think we're now at the third stage. Yep. And this is a really exciting one because it's about entrepreneurship, innovation, um, bringing together stuff that one country or one community on its own cannot do. But because we have reach, because we have the benefit of things like Thai, um, innovation and entrepreneurship does not have to be isolated to one country, one city, but is available across the world. And one very clear example I can see here is some of my own friends and some of our charter members um, are venture capital companies who, from Japan, one of them I can think of who's actually moved to Bangalore. And he's, he lives in Bangalore and he runs his venture capital firm out of Bangalore. So I think we're seeing more and more of this. And, and it's just, it's very exciting to, to, to watch this happen and support it. Awesome. Awesome. Um, my personal journey with Thai, I'll just take 10 seconds, is 1992, if I remember correctly, the first ever Thai con, Thai con Silicon Valley, I think. Um, I was a student volunteer. Wow. I, the first ever, uh, th I think it was in Fairmont or, you know, Marriott, Santa Clara, I don't recall, but one of those Marriott. hotels, Marriott, I think. Um, from there, and Sohas Patil was in the audience last night, and I distinctly remember Sohas Patil speaking at the first ever Taikon. I probably still have the binder from those days. 
uh, fast forward a couple of decades, uh, last year I had a chance to attend uh, Silicon Valley, Hyderabad, and just with the Thai network and connections with Nalan's meeting and Mavi and others, I was able to talk to folks from New York, New Jersey. Last night at dinner, we had Toronto, um, Melbourne, you know, uh, uh, I met some folks from Australia, Waves, guys. So the network, and, and I've been part of, you know, large companies, the network effect, right? Let's talk about that a little bit more, right? How do you recommend people take advantage of TGS 2024 and more importantly, the prep towards TGS 2024? And second, if I may add is, what would you sort of advise the team putting up TGS 2024 so that we can make it a meaningful experience because you guys bring phenomenal delegations from Japan. Okay, thank you. So, and that's, you, you know, you really got me thinking on this one, but I think one thing Thai Japan has done reasonably well, we are a small chapter, but for TGS in Hyderabad, half of our chapter came. And TV TGS Singapore, half of our chapter came. We had dinner together. We had dinner together, that's right. Yep. And we were and our hosts, so both Hyderabad and Singapore have been very gracious. Hyderabad gave us a, a panel discussion, you know, where we, we had expected maybe 20, 30 people would show up. We had 200 plus people. Um, by the time the session was done, uh, we couldn't leave because we had so many questions and answers. Um, here in, in Thai Singapore, we'll be running a fireside chat with... Uh, with Thai Japan as the sponsor, but we will be having two venture capital companies that are Singapore-based, investing across Southeast Asia and India, but are founded by Japanese founders. Right? And, and both of them will be part of our fireside chat. Um, the point I'm making here is, in getting the opportunity to, to host these events, our own chapter has galvanized. Yes, we came together. We ideated. We said, "Let's prepare. Let's, you know, let's 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 show up. Let's support. Let's network. Let's get some value. Let's give some value." And I think, you know, my advice to any chapter who is considering coming to TGS Bangalore: um, volunteer to do a seminar, volunteer to do a session, volunteer to do a booth, sponsor a night like we have Japan Night here at TGS. Um, do something that is not just consuming and participating, but giving and contributing as well. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So you're, you're truly, a, truly a community person. Um, one last thing. Um, Bangalore has awesome coffee. Bangalore has awesome dosa. Bangalore has awesome other food. You guys always have a Japan evening with you know, the local, uh, you know, drinks in terms of the sake, the soju, as you probably corrected me, not soju. Um, this point about bringing your culture there, right? What else do you see happening, at least from a trade and entrepreneurship perspective, that we should focus more, not just the Japan-India corridor, but maybe even the Southeast Asia, you're very active in Singapore. What else do you see for this region? And we'll try and close with that. Okay, thank you. Um, for, so maybe looking at things from a Japan context, um, Japan, you know, we know concepts like Kaizen, um, the, the ability to perfect something. Yeah. And sometimes this works against Japan because there's a desire for perfection, a desire for a very high degree of completeness before you push it out. And Japan's learning that sometimes you don't have to go for perfect, you have to go for good enough. So, you know, learning towards Japan is fr from India, from Southeast Asia is um, good enough and then iterate. Yep. What perhaps India and other cultures might learn from Japan or Southeast Asia is um, holisticity. Don't, don't solve just the problem. Be aware that there's other problems that exist around it yep. and solve holistically because if you do that, your business opportunity grows, your sustainability footprint goes, um, your, abil your ability to impact probably grows. So I think, you know, if I look at how, for example, Singapore does things, it doesn't solve a pinpoint problem, it solves at the ecosystem level, right? It, you, you solve the ecosystem and you're, you're solving a specific problem, but you're also solving potential future problems and creating potential future business opportunities. So I guess, yeah, I think that would be my response to your question. All right, thank you. Well, thanks, thanks. thanks. and we look forward to hosting you. We look forward to having a larger delegation. 
we look forward to bringing, you know, the presence from government and investors and friends and family, please. Uh, bring them along. Hopefully, we'll be able to give them a great experience. While we're there. really looking forward. Thank you so much. Great. Thank yeah. you. I look forward to seeing you again at PGS 2024. Thank you, guys. Thanks.